Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be making mitten gloves. And I'm gonna be showing you the step-by-step -step process of making these gloves with professional tricks and tips that's gonna take your sewing project to the next level. Once you make these, it's gonna inspire you to make different styles. And I'm gonna be having different styles coming at you this season. But other than that, grab that downloadable pattern and let's get started. Getting started with supplies, you're gonna grab yourself a half yard of fabric. You can get away with a quarter yard, but I highly recommend a half yard just in case you mess up. And as far as the fabrics go, you can use a sweater material, a novelty material, or a fleece. And I'm gonna be using a sweater material that has a lot of stretch to it. And if you also choose to take this route, just make sure there's plenty of stretch in your fabric. And depending on the option you choose for the cuff, you'll also need a quarter yard of ribbing. You'll need one snap button or a magnetic snap button, and it's your choice on what option you wanna go with. And this is gonna be for locking the mitten flap down. I'm gonna be using a magnetic snap button. I just like the way it snaps, and it's super easy to use. But really get creative with it because all you're really doing is holding that flap down. So realistically, you can use whatever you want. You'll need about 20 inches of elastic. And again, this is only if you choose this style of cuff. I put in two different options for cuffs, and we're gonna get more into that later on, but you can jump ahead to see which one you wanna do before you start gathering supplies. And lastly, you need your pattern. This pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. It's super simple to use. All you have to do is download it, print it off, cut it out, and you're ready to go. And once you have your supplies gathered and your pattern printed out, it's time to move into cutting. After cutting, you should end up with two thumb back panels, two thumb front panels and top panels, two upper back panels, four cover panels, make sure two are cut to size and two are cut at the bottom mark two bottom back panels, two front main panels, and lastly, two cuff panels. And you have two different options here. You can use the same fabric with elastic or you can use ribbing. And if your fabric is stretchy enough, you can use that too. Moving on to construction, grab the two shorter cover panels. And what we're gonna do is bias tape the bottom edge. The first method is using a bias tape making kit. This kit allows you to make your own bias tape and it comes with a bunch of different sizes and presser foot. And all you have to do is cut out your bias tape strip feed it through your folder and press it on the opposite side. It's super simple and it gives you the chance to pick the size bias tape you want and also match it with your fabric. The second option is using a bias tape attachment and these come in different styles and sizes as well. Depending on what machine you have, this might be the best option. I like using this because it's super simple. You can attach the bias tape directly to your garment. The main goal is to cover that raw edge at the bottom, so do what works best for you. After adding bias tape, grab the opposite sides of the cover panels and place the right sides together. You may have to stretch to fit the width because the bias tape is pulling it in a little bit, but once you have it pinned down, sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. And do your best to keep the bottom edges parallel to one another. And after sewing them together, flip the right sides out and grab your back bottom panels. We're gonna place the back cover panel at the top edge with right sides together. Once you have the layers pinned together, we're gonna sew as close as we can to that top bias tape edge. This will help hide the raw edges on the side of the cover panel. And make sure there's a little room on both sides of the cover panel. Next, grab your upper back panel and we're gonna add bias tape to each one of the finger openings. And this step can be avoided depending on what fabric you're using. If you're using fleece, it doesn't fray, so you don't have to add the bias tape to the raw edges. But if you wanna add it for an extra look, that's totally fine too. And I'm using the bias tape attachment again, and a quick way to do it is do all of them in one go. You can snip and clean up the bias tape after you're done sewing. And I like to cut mine as flush as possible to the edges, but this can be done later at the end too. Grab the upper and bottom back panels, and we're gonna place the right side of the upper back panel on the top of the back bottom back panel. When you have the three layers lined up, pin them together, and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. And the biggest key here is to keep all the layers even at the top edge. And again, you want the cover to be a little bit smaller than the overall width. Grab your front main panels, and we're gonna bias tape the finger openings like we did on the top back panel. So using the method you prefer, add bias tape to all the finger openings. And if you don't have an attachment, you can still use the same technique by sewing it all at once. And if you use that technique, go ahead and trim up the bias tape. Next, we're gonna sew together the complete front and back panels. Place the right sides together and we're gonna sew both the side edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. And make sure you line up the right with the right and the left with the left. Use the finger width as guidelines to line them up. And when you're doing the thumb opening side, once you get to the opening, stop, do a tack stitch and start a new stitch. There's gonna be a little gap on the thumb opening side. Grab both of the front thumb panels, and for the thumb front top panel, we're gonna roll over and hem that edge using the guides on the pattern. And for the front thumb panel, we're gonna bias tape the top edge. And again, if you're using fleece, you can go ahead and skip the bias tape steps. With the edges hemmed and bias tape, we're gonna place the bias tape over the hemmed edges and tack stitch both of the sides. 
and I recommend stitching as close as you can to the outside edge. And this is going to be the little slide opening for your thumb. Grab the thumb back panel and we're going to place the right sides together and line it up using the bottom indication on the pattern. And you can see the little notch at the bottom is where they line up and we're going to sew around the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And you can totally adjust the seam allowance for a tighter or looser fit. And take your time around that corner, it can be a little bit tricky. Flip the right sides out and pop it on really quick to see if it's the right size. Next, we're going to add the complete thumb panel. And the best way to do this without messing anything up is to try everything on and put the left with the left and the right with the right. And once you have it organized, using the bottom edge as a guide, we're going to line it up with the bottom edge of the main panel with the right sides together and sew all the way around the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And this can be a very tricky stitch because it's hard to get the fabric out of the way without stitching multiple layers together, so just take your time and go slow. And once you have it done, go ahead and flip the right sides out, try it on, and make sure all the seams are looking good. When you're satisfied, flip the wrong sides back out and lay it flat. From here, we're going to do the finger stitches, and this can be a little bit tricky. You just want to make sure that they're all lined up correctly. And the best way to do that is line up the top edges and pin them together. This is another step where the seam allowance can be adjusted to match the width of your fingers. I recommend starting closer to the edge and working in after you try it on and see what it feels like. Once you completed all the finger openings, you can go ahead and clean up any of the bias tape. The more bulk you remove at the tips, the more comfortable it's going to feel. Flip the right sides out and try it on. And before moving on, give it a good look over and make sure it fits right. And I'm going to go through both of the cuff options. So the first one, you're going to want to grab elastic and cut it a little bit shorter than the width of the panel. And the shortness will depend on how much you want it to cinch around your wrist. The shorter you go, the tighter it will be. And line it up in between the middle and the bottom edge and do a zigzag stitch, pulling it to the same length as the panel. And as you can see, the elastic pulls the panel back together. Place the right side together and sew the side edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And you can switch it back to a regular straight stitch. Fold it in half with the wrong sides touching. The biggest thing is you get to use the same fabric to match the cuff and the main panel. From here, you slide it into the bottom opening of the main panel and stitch around the outside edge. Moving on to option two. Option two, you can see is shorter and we're using that stretch of the ribbing as the elastic. But here's the thing, the fabric I'm using has a lot of stretch in it, so it's gonna pull it back. So I'm actually gonna use the same fabric that I'm already using. But again, this is based on whatever fabric you're using. So place the right side together and sew the side edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. In the same rules apply, the shorter you make it, the tighter it will be on your wrist. Flip the wrong sides together and we're gonna slide it into the bottom main panel just like we did for option one and stitch around the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. And this one, you're gonna have to pull it to match the width of the main panel and it's gonna be shorter to provide that cinch. So flip the right sides out, try it on and see how it feels. It really comes down to preference and how you like the cuffs on your wrist. I'm actually gonna go back and tighten mine up a little bit. And from here, we only have one more step and that's adding the button to the cover panel. Grab the button of your choice. You can use magnetic or you can use snap. And if you're using magnetic, I like using the rounded back so that way it doesn't hit your hand on the inside of the glove. And they're super easy to install. Just make your marking on your glove, cut your hole. I like placing it as far as I can to the top of the cover. Slide the snap portion through the hole and add your button on the inside. I'm using a press to secure it down, but you can also use pliers or even a hammer works too. Once you have the one attached to the cover, we're going to go ahead and fold the cover back and see where it falls. And that's where we're going to place our bottom portion. Make your marking, feed your bottom section through, add your back and press it down. Flip the cover back and check the alignment. And the best way to check it is to actually try it on. Give it one last good once over, make sure all the seams are looking good. And if your fabric is not woven as tightly, it might be best to add a little bit of interfacing before you add the button. And you can totally customize this pattern by adding a pattern material to the front to make it more utility driven. And there you have it, your glove mittens are done. Hopefully you had a lot of fun with this project and you really learned how to take your glove making skills to the next level. I'm gonna be adding more videos on gloves and mittens later on this season. And if you have any suggestions on what styles you wanna make in the future, Future, definitely send it my way and I'll make it happen for you. But until then, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. I'm going to keep the videos coming at you, so I'll see you next time.